Hello, and welcome to Ag Tech Talk, where we look at the agricultural advances shaping the future of the crop input industry. I'm your host, Dan Jacobs, Senior Editor with Agribusiness Global. Today, we're talking with Paul Mikesell, founder and CEO of Carbon Robotics, makers of a laser-wielding weed-killing robot. Paul, welcome to the, to the podcast. We appreciate your time. Yeah, you bet. Thanks for having me. Well, let's, before we even jump into the laser uh, weeder, let's talk about Carbon Robotics, the name. What, what's the significance of that? Where did it come from? Well, um, I mean, the honest truth is that we needed a name for the company, and we played with a bunch of different words that we thought sounded cool. And I think Carbon Robotics just came out of that list. There's nothing really specific about it um, having to do with anything other than we thought it sounded cool. Fair enough. Um, I just know there's a lot of talk about carbon and sequestration, and all that kind of stuff. And uh... there's certainly, you know, there's certainly positive environmental impacts to the laser weeder itself. Um, um, some of it having to do with not having to uh, cultivate so much for weed control. Some of it having to do with the negative environmental impacts of herbicide production, primarily on the production side. There's an incredible amount of greenhouse gases that go into the production of herbicides. Um, but the truth of the matter is uh, we just chose the name because we like the way that it sounds. Can't argue with you there. Um, and we'll get into some of that other uh, uh, stuff you just mentioned in a little bit. Uh, you know, technology has been injected into so many parts of our lives, you know, agriculture certainly included. Um, you know, in 10 years uh, or some undetermined time in the future, um, are we going to see any people actually working in fields or is it going to be all robotics? Well, that's a good question. I think that we will probably need people in the fields for a long time to come just because of the amount of uh, day by day or in some cases hour by hour decision making that needs to go on about what's going to happen in the field. Um, the the crop markets on a daily basis can have dramatic effects on what the plan for the day is going to be. And so those kinds of business decisions um, will probably be made by people for, for a long time to come. But um, one of the things that uh, those people making those decisions need is more insight, um, more data, more evidence to make those kinds of decisions. So I think one of the ways in which technologies generally on the farm moving forward will be helpful, not just talking about carbon robotics, but generally is in getting that kind of information to the growers so they under understand what's happening in their fields. Um, and so that's one of the, I think, more exciting things about egg tech generally is that information about the field in real time is now coming and that that information um, is now getting to the point where it's actionable. And I think there's been a lot of businesses that have tried to just sort of take pictures and tell farmers how to farm. That turns out not to work very well, but giving folks insights um, uh, is the real path forward here for all of this, all of this tr recent trend in data. And so we've been very focused on that as a side benefit of the laser reader. Um, so, uh, so there will probably be people involved for uh, a long time, but I hope that the, the kind of manual labor that's really expensive, hard to source, um, doing jobs that just generally aren't very fun and um, have hi highly variable quality content um, I think a lot of that stuff will become automated. Fair enough. Okay. So uh, we're talking about, um, you know, what, what caught my interest is, is, um, you know, weeding obviously is a huge issue. Um, yeah. Resistance, uh, you know, to some of the chemicals you mentioned earlier, yeah. um, you know, is, is a problem for in some places. So you, you've kind of gone a different route. Uh, you went with uh, lasers. Can you talk a little bit about mm -hmm. how that came about and, and, and yeah. what we're going with that? Yeah, it's in, it's kind of an interesting story, maybe. Um, we decided that we could make an impact in farming because we had uh, we came from an area where we were really specialized in understanding computer vision and the way that machines generally understand the world around them. And that was how we started down this path of figuring out that we wanted to work in agriculture. Um, it's a pretty great environment for technology innovation generally because all of this stuff is happening on private land and controlled environments. Um, the every action that happens on a farm farmer's land is has a dollar value associated with it, 
And that means that if you build if you build a machine with a demonstrated ROI, then you could have a very successful company. And and what that allows you to do is keep building new innovative stuff. Um, it's a pretty huge, you know, pretty huge market. So it's a great place to go into because you could have a large impact. And so that was kind of how we started. And then talking to farmers, we realized that this weed control issue was getting pretty bad because labor is continually getting harder to find. A lot of this is being done by H2A migrant laborers. Those folks have, because they're moving around a lot, you've got housing issues. Um, there's a lot to do with the workers' comp, overtime, compensation. That's very regional and kind of patchworky. Um, minimum wage law is continuing to change, which is causing a lot of challenges for farmers to even know, you know, what their costs are going to be. So putting people in the field to pick weeds is just not a very efficient use of time. And then there's all the issues around herbicides. What herbicides do to the crops? Um, they set the crops back quite a bit. What the downstream environmental impacts from direct spraying herbicides, the concerns around health effects, both directly to the growers and secondarily to the consumers. Concerns, as we mentioned before, about the greenhouse gas emissions from herbicide production, and then just general efficacy, um, because uh, the there's a rise in herbicide resistance in the weed population. So these weeds are getting resistant to the herbicides. So while we saw all these challenges going on, we decided we wanted to do something different. And the lasers came about from us just running experiments and trying some of everything. And I don't know if it was insight or just sort of random trying a bunch of stuff that got us to the lasers. But when we realized that was going to work, that was when we started digging in really hard and figuring out how to put a machine together. How long was the, the that process to, from the time you, the concept to where you are now? Um, we've been doing this for four years and there's been about three years in the field running machines. And that first year was just a lot of experimentation, trying just kind of everything we could think of. And um, there has been several generations of the machine. The final production for sale version is the one that you can probably see on our website at carbonrobotics.com. Um, and we have all the social media, you know, the Twitters and Instagram and YouTube, et cetera. Um, but that machine is a 20 foot wide machine. So it will run, if you're doing 80 inch row spacing, that'll do three rows of, of 80 inches. And it's configurable for, for, for anything down to 60 inch rows up to 84 inch rows. But that, that machine is the one that's the production version. Um, it's a tractor pull behind implement gets powered from the PTO of the tractor. Um, and then there's been a couple generations before that that were self-driving and primarily are currently used as demo units now. And so that whole process of like figuring out how the lasers would work, ruggedizing it, making it field ready, um, that's been, you know, four years total. Okay. Um, so can you give us kind of an overview of how it works? I mean, how many lasers are we seeing? How do they hit? Yeah. Make sure they hit the weeds and not the, you know, the, the crops. Yeah, the lasers, there are, in that 20-foot wide machine, there are 30 150-watt lasers. And so it's a, it's a pretty large amount of output power. Um, each, the, the, there's, a, there's a computer running that is looking at cameras that see the whole field uh, horizontally, so the, the whole stripe of the field that the machine is over, um, which will be typically... Uh, three or six rows, you know, depending on your row configuration. And it's finding all the weeds. And then it's telling the targeting system. So there's a targeting system for each of those lasers. So again, there's 30 of those. That targeting system is uh, through a series of some kind of interesting and clever optics um, is able to, uh, and some servos is able to control where the beam is going to land on the ground, so the laser beam is going to hit. And there's a camera that can see what the laser beam path is going to be. It's configured in a way so that the laser beam looks like it is hitting the ground from the point of view of this camera in the same area of pixels every time. And so that's how that camera knows what's going what it's going to shoot. From the view perspective of that cam camera and the target location of the laser is all controlled through optics. Okay, so it's all a 
kind of interesting science project to make that whole thing work. And what happens then is that targeting camera is positively identifying the weeds where the laser is um, moving to and kind of fine tuning the targeting over time because the machine is also moving, right? So we've got to, we've got to identify the weed and then stay on that target while the machine is moving. And that's all done to this computer vision system with this targeting system I've been, I've been talking about. And that whole thing happens visually and it's based on uh, some pretty interesting work that we've done on the computer vision side. So you've had to sort of train, uh, you know, the, the, I'm not sure what the computer brain to like identify what a weed is and what, what the that's, crop is. Yeah, that's correct. There's a couple of those things running. The the term is a, is a neural net, um, a deep learning neural net, which just means um, you could think of it as a, a giant matrix of, of, they call them neurons in the, in the AI world. Um, it's a, just, just think of it as a giant array of, of little micro decisions. And uh, over time, those micro decisions learn as a group how to do things like detect weeds, detect plants, um, or detect weeds, detect crops, et cetera. And there's a couple of different ones, versions of those neural nets running. There's the one that finds the, uh, um, the original weeds, and then there's the ones that do the, the fine-tuning uh, target camera adjustments after the laser has found the target. Um, and that whole thing is running. It's a process that really would not have been possible you know, seven to 10 years ago. We didn't know how to do this kind of work in the computer vision world. And AI and deep learning neural nets have really brought about a big change in the way that computers are able to do things, see the world around them. Um, the funny thing is um, agriculture and farms is really the sort of perfect environment for this kind of advanced technological deployment. Um, and I'd say the funny thing about that, because people don't usually think of, I think, farms as being an advanced technology area, but it actually really is. And that's come about, that change has probably happened in the last five years. And I think a lot of people don't really realize, don't realize it. But some of the most advanced computer vision and robotic machines are out on the farms right now today. Sure. Uh, certainly what we're talking about. and. Your answer may have addressed this question, so I apologize if I'm just repeating myself here. But is that learning process? Is it per farm? Is it you know once it's learned something, it's sort of applicable across the across the field, so to speak, or across once different fields? Yeah, once it's learned, it is applicable across all of the farms. But we are also gathering more data every day, and every picture that we take helps make the system better for everybody. Okay. So it is continually getting better from the information we're getting from a diverse number of farms. Um, but once learned, once you deploy a new laser weeder, you know, odds are we already know the crop and the information about the soil, et cetera, to be able to make good decisions. And then we'll continue to make it better over, over time from images from that specific location. Okay. Um, so, so what's actually happening is the, you know, so the laser spots or, you know, the computer, the camera spot that weed and they just zap it with a laser. Is that a, I mean, is that a permanent uh, death of that? You know, is it, is it, you know, I, I guess it's not getting below ground. It's not hitting the, the roots. I mean, is it, you know, does it still kill the weed entirely? Yeah. If you, if you burn out the Mary stem, the, the area that's the, undifferentiated meristematic growth cells of the plants. If you hit that with a laser or some of their high density energy source, you will explode the cell walls of the plant itself and prevent it from growing. And so that's how the system works. And we have been, you know, like I mentioned, doing this for several seasons now. Um, so the efficacy has been, you know, proven time and, and time again. Um, What's happening is the veg, the plant is is not able to grow anymore and will die, and that organic material then goes back into the soil and can be used and consumed by the other by the other crops, and so it means that we're not relying on you know chemicals which have their own runoff issues. Um, we're just deploying heat energy directly into the plant to kill it, and it does okay. and it does kill it. 
How, uh, uh, I don't know if you can put a percentage on this. I mean, you know, they, they say, you know, 85%, 95%, 112% effective. Yeah. Um, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I would say we're effective in, in normal operation at about 88% of the weeds. I think that's our, that's been our kind of benchmark. Um, okay. And some of that just has to do with variations in weed density across the width of the machine. Um, um, a lot of it is just, you know, how quickly can you get to how many weeds as you're cruising through that field? Okay. If I, if I remember reading on your website, I think it said about covers about two acres at about, uh, you know, roughly a, a mile per hour. It's not, yeah, it's exactly, about right. um, that's not exactly, yeah. you know, setting any speed records there. Is that, yeah. is that something, I mean, is it going to improve over the next few years, iterations of the machine? We, um, are continually working on performance, you know, all the time. Um, there are, there's a certain amount of energy that needs to be pumped into a plant to kill it. And, you know, with 30 lasers, it sounds like a lot of output power, but there's also a lot of weeds. So we're continually working on this. I wouldn't be looking for a, you know, a two X performance improvement in the next, you know, six months or something, but over time we will continue to chip away at that speed. Okay. Um, so is there a, you know, given, given the current, uh, parameters, is there a certain size farm that this, you know, is a best use? I mean, if you have something that's like, you know, a 10,000 acre farm, it's going to take a heck of a long time to get through all that. Well, yeah, I mean, I think so uh, typically anything that's kind of 800 acres or more has been good for us. Um, I, last time I looked at our average farm size was I think 4,000 acres and then, you know, tens of thousands of acres. Sure. I mean, no problem. It just means you need more than one laser weeder usually. Okay. All right. Um, and I think I, if I read, uh, maybe I jumping here, but um, uh, I think I read the, the ROI, you had mentioned that earlier is about one to three years, obviously, depending on the size of the farm and the machine, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. but, uh, can you talk yeah. a little bit about that? Yeah. Well, yeah. Typically one, one or one and a half year to three years is the ROI that we really look for and, and uh, focus on. And that means that the, amount of savings um, per year, if you divide that savings amount into the cost of the laser weeder, that means that within three years, the laser weeder pays for itself. So that's how we, that's how we look at it, is that we need to make sure that growers are getting a paid back period that's uh, three years or less, and that um, they get a positive ROI on every acre. And then it's just a question of how, you know, how quickly can we build them? Okay. All right. I think I remember seeing somewhere on your website the ones for uh, this past year, uh, 2022, were, were sold out. Um, you know, I don't know how many you built, but uh, you know, selling out is probably a good thing. Yeah, we have we have uh, we're continually trying to bring on more manufacturing capacity. We have machine slots available in the second half of 2023. Right now, the first half of 2023 is sold out. Um, manufacturing is still difficult right now supply chain is still messed up um it's hard to get parts you know parts that we used to be able to get <clears throat> i don't know what two or three years ago used to be able to get them at 10 you know quantity of ten thousand next day delivered no problem now is like 18 months you know <laughs> so it's it's wow. it's still it's still pretty bad um and there's a lot of work to do and it sort of exposes i think how much particularly for the for the base level technological components, I'm talking about integrated circuits and micro microcontrollers, et cetera, everything that goes on a, on a circuit board, on a PCB, um, you know, how much of those components come from overseas? And I, I, the answer is probably a hundred percent. We don't do much manufacturing, electronics manufacturing in this country anymore. And so that means that we're really kind of exposed. And I think there's a lot of, shock still working its way through the system so it's still incredibly hard to get parts and that's part of the reason why our order book is so far out yeah that's uh, certainly an issue uh on and, and a variety of of uh agricultural issues uh you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, that we've talked about covered over the years is there a um um a concern uh about like the the you know is this has to be an early season you know where the crops are st still low i'm thinking of you know corn that grows, you know, several feet tall, you know, later in the season, is there, yeah. you know, can, it, can the vice still be used then? You want to get us in pretty early. Yeah. I mean, earlier is better. Smaller weeds take less time to shoot and kill. And so getting us in quickly is good. 
Depends on the crop. For something like onions, which don't really ever shade out, so they always have continually new flushes of weeds, um, you'll send us in through a couple passes, but we've been in onions up until a week or two before harvest. So as long as it's a crop that that's growth cycle keeps it below, you know, three feet, that's a, that we can go in whenever you need. A lot of these things will shade out really fast. So the, the canopy of the crop will prevent sunlight from getting down below to, and, and we'll, uh, weeds will basically stop growing at that point. And so that's where, for those kinds of crops, we'll do, you know, single pass or maybe you, you'll run us through maybe twice or something like that. Um, so it's kind of the crop dependent, um, but we've been primarily focused on vegetable and specialty crops. So corn has not been a big focus of ours um, for economic reasons anyway. Okay. Have you, uh, so the people that have been using this, the, the, the growers that have been using this uh, uh, laser weeder, um, what kind of response, what are, what are you hearing from them? What are they, are they happy? Are they expressing any concerns or changes, that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, it's been a lot of um, deployments and most of it, most of our challenges is about getting machines out into the field, building them fast enough, really. Um, the growers have been happy with it. The, you know, the, the cost savings are great. The technology is interesting. Um, and we're allowing growers to do things like plant more densely because the laser weeders accuracy and how close it can get to crops and still kill weeds and all of that stuff is allowing growers to, kind of to do things like get more, more stand count per acre, things like that. So there's some positive benefits beyond just killing weeds um, that have come from the laser weeder. Um, f from the fact that we don't have any crop input, so you're not putting herbicide in the ground. You don't have to till, so you're not spinning up that topsoil. You're not getting microbacteria onto the leaves of your leafy greens, right? So you're not you're not having to cultivate. Um, so there's been a lot of sort of secondary benefits that we didn't even realize when we were building the initial product spec that have that we learned about, and that's been exciting for us. Okay. Um... You know, what, what's the old line? If you're not moving forward, you're you're falling behind. I mean, what's yeah. what's next for the laser reader? What, what, how will it be different a couple of years from now? Yeah, we've been focusing on some other uh, things we could be doing. Um, laser reader uh, software now is working on and finishing up the technology for thinning. So you can use laser reader for thinning. Um, some folks will want to basically overseed the fields because you don't get 100% germination in your seed. And so you'll, you put more seeds down so that you get good stand count throughout the field. But if you do that, if you overseed, what it means is you'll have some crowding issues in areas where you do get good germination across a, a higher distribution of the seeds. And so there's a process called thinning, which is get rid of some of those extra plants that will cause crowding issues. And so laser weeder um, can also do that. So that's what we're working on. And then just sort of generally other technologies on the farm and areas that we can help with we're starting to focus on some of those other projects okay anything you can share right now or nothing pull that in your back pocket? Yeah. <laughs> nothing yet you know we don't know what's going to pan out yet so i don't want to make any predictions fair enough uh what else do we need to know laser weeder uh it's been kind of a labor of love and passion over the last four years um just you can see our social media and see how it works and if you're interested in laser weeder, check out Carbon Robotics. Uh, we are the one and only laser weeder. Okay, and I think you mentioned the website earlier. That was carbonrobotics.com. Yeah, that's right. Carbonrobotics.com. Okay, terrific. Uh, thank you, Paul, for your time today. We appreciate your thoughts on technology and the future of agriculture. Join us next time for another installment of Ag Tech Talk, where we'll talk with another expert improving the ag industry through technology.